so I'm a dad. <laughs> it's official. Uh, man, it's been a whirlwind of events since bringing our daughter Brooklyn into this world. And uh, I want to share that with you guys, share the whole story. And of course, what newborn parenting and type 1 diabetes management has looked like. Uh, I, I can only imagine like people who stumble across this video are going to be really confused seeing a guy talking about newborn uh, parenting. But yes, it's me and I'm talking about my diabetes, my experience and my perspective of my absolute rock star wife giving birth to our baby Brooklyn and what that did to my blood sugars as well as the, the strategies that I used to keep them in range, uh, when they did stay in range, when they didn't stay in range, <laughs> and of course walking you through all those steps uh, alongside the story. So without any further ado, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so for this story, we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, nine months ago, not kidding, <laughs> uh, but actually leading into this whole labor and delivery process, my wife was at a doctor's appointment and long story short, sparing all the details, the doctor said, hey, it's time to go to the hospital. And so my wife actually had the pleasure of texting me and saying, hey, um, we actually might be going to the hospital to give birth tonight. And I was like, oh my gosh, right now I was so excited. Uh, but it, what was Somewhat hilarious is my blood sugars were cruising perfect at 95 for like hours on end. I was like taking screenshots, right? I'm like, this is awesome. And then from the moment she texted me, of course, I got so excited. I'm about to become a dad, right? And my blood sugars took off and uh, could not catch up with them. <laughs> so I'm going to put up a, a screenshot real quick so you guys can see what that looked like. Uh, and, you know, it cruised up. I saw it hit 120, 130, 150, and I was like, oh, no, it just kept going. And I uh, ended up delivering some correction boluses of insulin, bring it back down before it got too out of control. But quick reminder there that excitement and adrenaline can absolutely have an impact on your blood sugar. So I got excited. And, uh, of course, we had the news that we're going to the doctor, but they said, hey, you can take your time. You're not in a rush. There's nothing wrong per se. It's just like timeline wise, you should probably go to the hospital tonight. It's like, oh, OK, cool. So we had a chance to actually go back home and collect our things. We already had our bags packed, our go bag for the hospital, right? But in addition to that, to take extra time, and uh, you know, I'm thinking ahead, like I'm probably not gonna shower for the next couple of days, so I'm gonna shower real quick. And <laughs> I hopped in the shower, uh, made a quick dinner for myself, because I knew that home-cooked meals where I can measure out the carbs, right? Way easier to get the carb counts, and take the right amount of insulin, versus grabbing something on the go. So I thought I'll just I'll have dinner here, I'll shower, and we'll take off, and so that gave my wife an opportunity to collect herself and uh, get her things and make sure that we're not missing anything, the checklists of, you know, everything's in our go bags and toothbrushes and deodorant and all that fun stuff. So we finish up, uh, you know, I finish my dinner, we hop in the car and we call the hospital, said, hey, uh, you know, with regulations and the whole thing, there's a protocol for us to call and see if there is a hospital bed, like a room for us to show up to. And they're like, oh yeah, they called ahead, we're expecting you. Uh, but for reals, there's no rush. Like, have a nice dinner, enjoy your night, and come in when you're ready. And I was like, oh. So that's my wife, and I was like, where do you want to go to dinner? <laughs> Let's make sure you enjoy this, because I'm pretty sure you can't eat uh, while you are giving birth. And so right off the bat, in and out She knew exactly where she wanted to go. So we stopped and in and out I sent her inside, and then I went and got gas, because the hospital for us was about 35 minutes away. So thank God it wasn't a rushed thing, because that would have been stressful. Uh, we grab in and out, she enjoys it, we head to the hospital. Now, as soon as we get to the hospital, I'm glancing at my blood sugars, making sure they're looking okay, right? Making sure that that spike doesn't come back. I'm trying to do some breathing exercises and calm myself down so I don't have to deal with messy blood sugars while I'm helping out my wife. And uh, as we get into the parking structure at the hospital, I hear this weird sound, and it's kind of making a, a rhythmic uh, click, almost like a quarter in a dryer. You know, it's like tink, tink. Tink. I'm like, what the heck is that? Huh, you know what? It's matching the speed at which my tire is rotating. 
that's not a fun thought. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stop. It sounds like I might have something in my tire. Uh, my wife's got her eyes closed. She's just kind of breathing through, you know, relaxing and uh, trying to take a moment to herself before we enter this potentially stressful situation. And uh, I parked the car. She opens her eyes and looks around. I was like, we're not in a parking spot. Like, why are we, why are we stopped? <laughs> and I was like, I, I think I heard something in the tire. I was gonna check on it real quick. So I pop out, go around, and to my surprise, there is a two inch razor blade sticking out of our front right tire. No idea where that came from. I and mean, thank God it didn't happen on the freeway because that probably would have been a very dangerous situation. Uh, but yeah, we ran over a razor blade upon the getting into the hospital's parking structure. I don't know who ditches a razor blade as they're going to the hospital or maybe leaving the hospital, I don't know. Uh, but either way, we had a razor blade stuck in our tire and it wasn't losing air too fast or just yet, I wasn't quite sure. All I knew was if this tire goes flat, let's have it at least in a parking spot so I don't have to get it towed, right? We can deal with that another time, uh, I guess tomorrow, you know, when we have a baby. But for now, let's just get into a parking spot. So I didn't pull it out and I didn't want the tire to go flat any faster. And I drove into a parking spot, we parked and we headed in. And we get into the hospital, super smooth experience. They get us checked in. I'm looking over my blood sugars. I was making sure not to perseverate on that flat tire potential experience. You know, I was like, maybe it's not gonna go flat. I just hope for the best. Uh, don't freak out about it because you don't want your blood sugars to go up again. <laughs> so I'm always thinking about my blood sugars and uh, making sure that I'm aware of these factors, right? And that's what oftentimes leads into frustrating blood sugars with a lot of people is they just don't know why blood sugars are doing what they're doing, right? And I used to be in the exact same spot. You look at your CGM or maybe it's before CGMs and you prick your finger and you're like, 226, where the heck did this come from? I took insulin for my meal, right? And you know, unbeknownst to us, of course, there are the fats, the proteins, the stress, dehydration, lack of sleep. Uh, maybe your basal or bolus rates aren't set properly. There's so many different things. And if you don't know why blood sugars are doing what they're doing, it can be absolutely infuriating, right? You're just uncertain as to why they're doing what they're doing, which leads you into feeling out of control. Uh, and of course, that's just not a fun place to be at. So. Uh, thankfully, I knew about these things and I'm looking at my blood sugars, making sure they're staying where they should be. And uh, I don't wanna add any stress to this situation if I go hypo or hyper, right, low or high. Uh, and thankfully, they were right where they should be. So uh, I believe I have a screenshot of this actually as well. So I'll put that up with the whole uh, razor blade in our tire incident so you can see what my blood sugars look like. Uh, but after that, we get checked in, we open up to this massive room like labor and delivery has it made. So, I mean, they, they had a pull out bed for me. It was insane. So we get in there, get all settled. And uh, at that point, it's about time for looking towards bedtime, but there's no bedtime in sight. <laughs> and the reason being that there's nurses coming through, the OB, uh, the doctor, the midwife, like every 10 minutes or somebody new, there's new people coming in for COVID tests. Like you have to make sure that you're negative. And it was, like a whole process, right? And so by the time we start even considering going to sleep, because she's not like ready to give birth just yet, but we're getting ready. Uh, by the time we consider going to bed, it's already like four hours past my bedtime. It's like two o'clock in the morning or something. And so uh, I already knew I was in for a potentially different day the next day, because if you have a lack of sleep, this can also impact blood sugars, right? Rest is critical for blood sugar management, alongside just your body recovering from the day prior and your mind recovering, like just get your sleep if you can. So in this situation, couldn't get sleep. And uh, you know, it's tough to sleep on a pullout bed in a hospital, it's a different environment. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't expecting the best rest. But of course, throughout the night, the machines are beeping, my wife's vitals are beep, 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 like they're measuring everything, which is great. I'm grateful for that, but <laughs> it's definitely hard to sleep with that coupled with the excitement that I'm gonna be a dad soon. So I end up pacing back and forth, reminding my wife that we're gonna be parents soon. And I'm like celebrating and she's like, you're stressing me out, Matt, you need to stop. <laughs> and so I'm just lighting up on the inside at the pure thought of I'm gonna have a daughter soon. And uh, she wasn't having it. She's a little stressed out. Obviously, different perspectives, right? I'm the one that's just there to support her. She has to go through it and she's a little bit nervous. So. Uh, that side of the story was uh, very different from both of our perspectives. But what ended up happening, which was actually quite interesting, is that the process lasted a little bit longer than we expected. So they sent us in 
and let us know it wasn't a rush, we didn't realize how not a rush it was. In fact, you know, she was induced, but she was, uh, well, I don't know what they call it, in labor? No. The process, whatever, it was like 24 hours. And so the whole next day, you know, overnight, we're like, when's it gonna happen? What's going on? Like, can they come in and measure? Like, what's, what is the expectation here? You know, and it's hard to plan ahead when you don't know what to expect. Now, that being said, I had done my research beforehand, and so I had my wife, obviously. I knew that, A, we could be in there for a day, two days, maybe three days, right? And I also knew from my own previous experience that hospital food is crap. <laughs> Let's just be real about it. Most of the time, hospital food's not great. In fact, when I was first diagnosed, they brought me applesauce and pancakes and an orange, I think it was. And of course, you know, when you're first diagnosed, you're brand new to carb counting and taking insulin, you're probably not going to pre bolus because you don't even know what that is yet. Um, terrible, terrible first meal. Maple syrup? Really? I mean, now I can figure it out. Right? Like I, I actually have pancakes quite often. I love them. Uh, now I have the strategies, but on day one, you, you don't want to put someone through that. Come on, my blood sugars are probably through the roof. Anyways, I knew hospital food wasn't great, right? So what I had done and this is for myself, but also for my wife, because she wanted foods that she was familiar with, is we packed food. We brought it to the hospital in a cooler. So I packed a cooler in our suitcase full of food. For me personally, I had carb counted all of my foods at home. That's right. I have a food scale. I used that food scale to count on my carbs, and I got a rough estimate of my proteins and fats. If you did not know, proteins and fats do need to be considered with your diabetes management. It's new, I know. It's an update and it's frustrating too because you thought counting carbs was difficult enough. <laughs> now, getting the, the proteins and the fats, you don't always need an exact count, but ballparking it's going to be helpful, especially if you know how to approach those situations, which I do. And so I put that into my own uh, formula that I use for, you know, dosing and making decisions for diabetes. And ultimately had, uh, I think, five meals that I had prepared. And they were all pretty similar. I didn't want to go crazy and like be Chef Matt, you know. It was like PB&J, uh, some dates, some prunes, some crackers. I think I had some protein bars in there. Just really simple stuff that traveled well. You know, it's the same thing I do when I travel when I'm flying somewhere new or for road tripping. I just throw some easy foods in there that are easy to count, taste good enough. So having these meals mapped out made my life a lot easier. You wake up, I know the carb count, right? In fact, I tried ordering from the hospital menu once. I took one bite of it and was like, nope, back to the PB&J. <laughs> My food tastes better, uh, even with the, uh, the carb counts being provided by the hospital because a lot of uh, pregnant patients that they see are diabetic as well. Right? They call it gestational diabetes. And so with that, um, you know, I decided just to go with my own foods. And so ultimately, I had food throughout the day. My blood sugars sort of cooperated. I was still pretty excited. You know, every time the nurse would come in and give us an update, my blood sugars would start to creep up because I'd be like, ah, I'm gonna be a dad, right? And like getting pumped about it. Uh, and so I actually brought exercise bands with me in the suitcase to the hospital. Here's why. Exercise can help bring blood sugars down, okay? Uh, on the other side of bringing blood sugars down, I also brought my own water because I didn't know what the water was going to look like. Uh, we actually have a, a really fancy like water filter and ionizer. And so I brought two gallons of that, a gallon for myself and a gallon for my wife. Um, and it's just like cleaner water, you know. So we had our own food, we had our own water, and I brought exercise supplies. And I realized I'm starting to sound a little bit high maintenance at this point, right? But I'm giving you the real story about what happened. My strategy is to keep my blood sugars cruising. So ultimately, anytime my blood sugars would creep up, I would either pace back and forth, get some movement in, right? Increased movement helps to increase heart rate, helps the insulin circulate. You can get the blood sugars down a little bit quicker if you do have insulin on board. Use caution though, of course, this isn't medical advice, blah, blah, blah. With that, um, I was able to keep my blood sugars down and uh, the reason I wanted to bring my own exercise equipment, which was literally a resistance band, like it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, it's super simple, but I didn't want to think that I had to leave the room, or I didn't even want that thought to cross my mind. I wanted to be in the room with my wife the entire time. So the exercise bands enabled me to stay right by her side and just do some overhead press, some squats, some lunges, 
And that not only helped my blood sugars come down, but also helped me to feel better because I'm an active person. I like to move. In fact, movement is crucial for your overall health. So I thought, you know what? I'll bring those. That helped me a lot. Along with the hydration, my own food, I was still in a, a relatively normal and consistent routine, which helps blood sugars a lot. All right, if you're gonna be focused and hyper focused on something else, like your wife going through labor and delivery, <laughs> then limiting the other variables is gonna be actually pretty helpful, uh, you know, in that short span of time. I wouldn't recommend, you know, being hyper restricted long term, but for a short period of time, it can actually be helpful because consistency will always lead to consistency. However, as we found out after our daughter was born, consistency is not always available <laughs> when you have a newborn. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. But long story short, now you guys know the strategies. I packed my own food, I counted the carbs, and I had an idea of the fats and proteins, brought my own water. Now you don't have to bring your own water, but just stay hydrated, that one's huge. I brought exercise equipment, you don't have to bring exercise equipment, but know that walking in circles can help, dancing, doing some lunges or some body weight squats, these are all beneficial for bringing blood sugars down uh, in most circumstances, right? Everybody's a little bit different. So those were my three big strategies for going into this. That was my plan. That being said, uh, the lack of sleep kind of caught me off guard, you know, both during the labor and delivery and afterwards. But what was unexpected, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but just kind of the the idea behind it is uh, after our incredible baby Brooklyn was born uh, at 2.19 a.m. She uh, wanted to come in the middle of the night, uh, but 2.19 a.m. on November 19th, 2021, we welcomed our little girl into the world. My blood sugars, pff, perfect. I was so excited about that because the last thing I wanted to do was become an issue or a struggle or something to worry about for my wife. I wanted to make sure that there was absolutely nothing else that she needed to focus on except for delivering our baby. So if I was low, you know, drinking a juice box in the corner, I wouldn't be able to help. I actually played an active role in the delivery of our baby. I have some previous uh, introductory medical experience. You know, I was trained to be a firefighter years ago. I have my EMT certificate. Um, went for some advanced trainings as well, and I actually had trained for like side of the road delivery of a baby. So I was like, hey guys, I have a little bit of understanding. Can I help? And they're like, sure, sure, it's fine. So I got to play a role in that. That was super fun um, and just incredible to watch and be part of that experience. I, I'm so grateful that I got to do that. Uh, but blood sugars cooperated. Very uh, thankful for that, but also my strategies helped as well. But going into pregnancy, not pregnancy, into delivery, um, I actually had like this internal bet going on <laughs> with one of my old clients who graduated from our programs uh, because he also had a child who was due the same week. And so going into it, he was all excited and pumped. We're going to be dads at the same time. He was already a dad, but you know, it's, it's, he was like his third or fourth child. Uh, but he actually messaged me and was like, hey, Matt, thanks to everything you taught me, I was able to implement these strategies X, Y, Z, and my blood sugars, I stayed in range the day before and the day of, you know, the full 24 hours, 97% time in range. Whoo, baby. <laughs> I was so excited to read that. But of course, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, crap. Now I have to do that good because I'm his coach. <laughs> so I had this, uh, this self-inflicted uh, competition that he didn't know about. He's just like, oh, you helped me do this. Thank you so much. And I was like, shoot, I got I to gotta make sure I do well with my blood sugars so that I can show him that I still got it, you know. Uh, so I'll put this on the screen. Uh, this is actually a screenshot of the day before that Brooklyn was born and the day of. So the two-day period. As you can see, it was 96% time in range. Oh man, I was so close. My own clients, and this actually happens more and more frequently these days, but my own clients are doing better than I am, which I am thrilled about. So he got 97% time in range, I got 96. So I was so close, uh, but he rocked it. I'm so grateful that his blood sugars cooperated as well. So with my 96%, we got that. She was born, she did great. Uh, the next two days, uh, I did also get a screenshot. So the day that she was born is the overlap to so three days total, right? The day she was born and then the next day, I got a screenshot there, I got the 100%. It was like, yes, back on track. <laughs> so I did get the 100%. Uh, 
uh, for the day she was born and then day after, even with you know lack of sleep and excitement and all those different things. The strategies work, guys. If you know what you're doing, you can adapt to different situations. This is something I had literally no experience with. I have never become a dad before, right? This is a brand new experience. I didn't know what to expect. And yet with the proper strategies that we teach in our programs, you can absolutely still maintain control, all right? And I'm still eating like tons of carbs and you know, I had to skip a workout and then I, I brought the resistance bands. This is still possible. And I want you to see that and know that, not that it's expected, but it's possible. That's the key right there. And then I'll throw this screenshot up as well. The following day and a half or two days or whatever that is, was also 100% time and range, even with this insane situation. And I won't go too far into details here, but basically um, the staff wanted us to stay for additional observation, right, to say the least. And so as a result, we ended up staying in the hospital for a total of like four or five days. And we, like, we couldn't really leave. My wife stayed in there. I think I left twice. Once was to restock food. <laughs> I was like, oh great, we're gonna be here for a while. Uh, and then the second one was actually to set up a surprise for her, for us to come home to uh, in our place. And so that was fun for me to do for her. But uh, during those four or five days, it was you know lack of routine, complete lack of sleep. It was gnarly. Uh, lack of exercise, you know, the food was pretty good because I brought my own food again and was able to keep that consistent. But it was a great introduction into parenting newborn parenting where there is no set routine. You no longer own your schedule. And uh, this happens uh, time to time. You know, my previous jobs, I used to work as a, a model and an actor and on set, same thing. You don't know when you're getting called on set sometimes. Uh, you don't know how long you're gonna be on set. You don't know what their directions are and what the food's gonna look like. So when you don't own your own schedule, when you're not in control of keeping things routine, life gets a little bit more tricky with type 1 diabetes, right? And so uh, those four or five days in the hospital where we just kind of stayed in the same hospital room, <laughs> it was very, well, it wasn't boring because we had a newborn in the room with us. That was interesting, uh, but it was unfortunate. You know, you can't go back to your own home. And so uh, during that experience, I skipped all the workouts. The room was a bit smaller than the labor and delivery room, so I couldn't exactly set up my resistance pants. Uh, and of course I was needed as well. And during those four to five days, that's when I took care of the flat tire. You know, I had a tow truck come out, help me swap out the spare. Then I had to take the spare over to a tire place and have them change out the tire with a new tire. And uh, it turns out the tire never actually popped, but it was like an eighth of an inch away from popping. So they were like, yeah, this isn't safe. And I was like, yeah, I want the best for my newborn. So <laughs> we're gonna put a new tire on there. Uh, but during that process, it was an introduction into the uncertainty, the uh, unstability of my own calendar, my own schedule, and realizing that going into life as a parent, I am no longer going to be able to make all of the decisions for each frame and point of my day. I can no longer map out an exact calendar of my expectations. I have to be flexible. I have to adapt, right? And with blood sugar, it's been interesting as well, where I have to adapt my meal times and my bedtime and my wake up times and, you know, getting up at two o'clock in the morning sometimes or staying up until two o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been a wild ride. And it, we're like, what day is it? We're like a week and a half into this. <laughs> so I know I'm gonna have tons of other lessons I'm gonna learn from this. I am a newbie and I recognize that. However, a few things that I've noticed in addition to that hospital stay is that the lack of sleep did catch up to me. So one big thing that I've noticed is that my fasting blood sugars are increasing slowly. So the longer I went without a full night's sleep, they would get higher and higher and higher each day. And it wasn't this stark difference, you know, day one versus day two kind of thing, but because I do track my data and I'm looking over, you know, what happens on what days, what are patterns that I need to be more aware of, uh, that's what I keep my focus on. So I was able to see those patterns before they got too out of control. However, uh, at the height of it, you know, before I was like, whoa, I need to get this taken care of or change my insulin, right, to match it, uh, my fasting blood sugar had been about 50 points higher than it typically has been over the last couple of years, which is a lot for me. I was like, oh, this is not fun to see, right? So lack of sleep, I got to see some big impacts from that. The second piece, and this is actually one item that I got a lot of questions on our Instagram. Uh, and if you're not following us on Instagram, you want to see more daily tips and tricks, that's going to be at FTF Warrior. So if you're not following me, go to Instagram, type in FTF Warrior, give us a follow and uh, check it out. But what I've been getting on there, I made a post about it and said, hey, if you've got questions on 
you know, my experience with being a parent and or a new parent and living with type 1 diabetes, big question was how the heck do you pre-bolus, right? And it makes sense because if you start to pre-bolus, you go to take your first bite and right as you do, baby starts crying, freaking out. Maybe the diaper is dirty. You got to go change it, right? Well, how am I supposed to go change the diaper if my insulin is about to hit me hard, right? I need to eat my food. And so there's a couple different strategies here that I've been able to play with over the last week. And I'm going to be honest with you, the number one strategy is to have a deal with your significant other or somebody else who can help you out in those moments. So before uh, we became parents, I had a chat with my wife and I was like, hey, just so you know, there might be some situations where, in the, like I had actually thought this through, I was like, there might be some situations where I pre-bolus, insulin's hitting, you know, maybe I'm dropping. I might need you to take over. You know, like if Brooklyn starts crying and my insulin's getting, uh, it's work done, you know, lower my blood sugars and it's getting to a dangerous spot, um, I'm going to need you to take over. Is that okay with you? She was like, yes, absolutely. So beforehand we set our expectation, I said, hey, uh, you know, during meals, if you can take over during that time, if I'm experiencing some difficult blood sugars, that would be amazing. And you know, I'll take over in other times when maybe you need a break or take a nap or whatever that is. So we set these expectations beforehand that were incredibly helpful. Now, of course, not everybody has that significant other, or maybe they don't work at home. You know, for me, I work from home. This is my job. This is my office. Uh, Brooklyn and Lisa are in the other room. They're hanging out. So because of that, that enabled me to have that option. And that was a lifesaver. There's been a few times where I knew if I had to move away from my meal, I would have gone low. So that's step number one. Try and find something you can make that deal with. Hey, I'll do the dishes if you take over right now because my pre-bolus is hitting pretty hard, right? Uh, but of course, outside of that, there are more realistic strategies for people who are either by themselves or maybe you're just home alone, your spouse is at work, um, all those types of situations. How do you pre-bolus? And one of the questions that I got on my comments on Instagram was, um, I stopped pre-bolusing because I didn't want to worry about going low, so I just dose, eat, and deal with the skyrocketing blood sugars which is definitely one way to do it. It's a Band-Aid fix, right? And not to diss this person at all, that's better than going low, right? Absolutely, because the low means that you're not available to help the baby or yourself. Lows are terrible. The high, not great, but it's the better alternative to going low in most cases. So that being said, there is a way to adjust that. And of course, I can't give specific advice on here to anybody because this is not a coaching client relationship. In my programs, I walk people through exact steps and like how to get through life and adapt with diabetes. Uh, but in this situation, you could dose and then eat super slow, right? Just kind of pick at your food so that the insulin has a little bit more of a chance to kind of get working. Um, someone in the comments had also mentioned they do a super bolus, which if you're not familiar with that, it's, it's kind of advanced. It's a bit more of a an advanced strategy overall, but it's where you pull your basal insulin if you're on a pump, you give it as a bolus with your bolus, and then you set a temp basal, I believe, for 0% over the next X amount of hours, however much you basal you borrowed. So you're borrowing future insulin to use in the present. I'm not recommending it. I'm just giving you some info, generic info, okay? Not medical advice at all. Uh, but that's one strategy somebody else found that works pretty well. For me personally, like I said, I work through a, kind of a deal with my wife where if she is available, then I say, hey, let me just get my meal done and I'll jump right back in. I can help as soon as I'm done eating. And that's been super helpful for me. But uh, it definitely has been tricky around meal times because if she is getting fussy, uh, my wife or the baby, <laughs> just kidding, it's my baby only. Uh, but if the baby's getting fussy, you know, I can try to assist while I'm eating. I've learned the whole one hand carry and take bites while you're uh, rocking the baby. Uh, that's been helpful, but this whole new process all boils down to one core concept. And that is that you have to have a formula for your blood sugars that adapts, that is dynamic. You cannot rely on consistency in order to lead to consistent blood sugars because consistency doesn't exist anymore. You know what I mean? So with that key understanding of like, I don't own my schedule anymore, there's no routine that I can consistently rely on uh, for meal times or workouts or sleep or any of these things, I have to be able to adapt to whatever that day has to bring. Start with the higher blood sugar, adapt. Don't get to eat lunch, adapt. <laughs> don't get to work out for three days in a row, adapt. And if you're able to adapt, you have the knowledge and the strategies that's where you can maintain control. 
that's where you see these numbers, right? This is my clarity report for the last week. Um, so first week that Brooklyn was here, this is pretty consistent with me. As you can see, it says uh, that there's a 2% decrease from the week before. So it's a little bit less than I'm typically at, but with it still being in the 90s, I think it says 94, 96, something like that. Uh, I think that that is, you know, the proof is in the pudding where if you know what you're doing and you're able to adapt with your blood sugar formula, these things are still possible for you. Not to say I'm not going to hit rough patches. You know, I'm sure there's a week ahead where this is going to be rough. I'm probably going to see some struggles to say the least with blood sugars and especially with being a parent. Lots and lots of lessons to learn. I do not want to come across as prideful and like we figured it out because we have not. We are still learning a lot about parenting. But with your blood sugars, if you can adapt, you will win. That is the key concept I want you to take away from today's lesson, okay? So with our formula, with our blood sugars, with our strategies, if you're able to treat it more of like a dynamic formula, not so much like two plus two equals four, but A plus B equals C, where A, B, and C can equal anything, any variety of blood sugar variables, and they'll still equal each other out, right? Whereas two plus two is four is a routine because you only have two plus two, and it can only equal four. That's like if you say, I have to eat at 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m., and if I don't, the equation doesn't work. That's not going to work when life gets hectic, and this doesn't even just apply to parenting, right? This applies to your work schedule, this applies to vacation, when you know, your typical routine is just non-existent. You cannot rely on a static equation of 2 plus 2 equals 4. It has to be a dynamic approach, and this is why we teach formulas. Formulas are dynamic. They change based on the situation. Day one versus day two, you're going to see a different response to pasta. You might see a different response to your workout. You have to have this ability to adapt. And actually, on this topic, um, a lot of people that I get on the calls with that I do every week uh, have actually let me know they had no idea that I actually do coaching. I actually do coach on these topics specific to blood sugars, not parenting blood sugars <laughs> and within blood sugars and diabetes management uh, for those who are insulin dependent that is my specialty and we've actually come up with something called the 80 20 blood sugar formula and no it's not what you think uh, within that formula we look at how we can approach diabetes from a more dynamic perspective right looking at meals and workouts and sleep routines and all these different things from this dynamic approach allows you to have more flexibility more freedom with your diabetes management, understanding that, you know, just because your insulin dose worked today, does not mean that it's going to be the exact same tomorrow. And if you know the key players that have an impact on your blood sugars, you can get pretty darn close to automating it. And this is exactly how I was able to keep my blood sugars in range for 100% right after becoming a father, right? And having a newborn keeping me up half the night, being in a hospital, not working out, everything changed, and yet my blood sugars remained under control. That is what's possible. Yes, I do coaching. We have a fully built out program. I've helped hundreds of other type one diabetics like myself achieve stable and predictable blood sugars. And I can do the same for you. However, we gotta make sure it's a good fit first. So, uh, best place you can go to see if you like my style, if you like the idea of a dynamic approach with more of a formula proven, formula driven approach to diabetes, there's a free training you can check out to see what I do how I do it, what the structure of my, my strategies look like, and you can go check that out at diabetesinaction.com. If you like the way I talk, if you like the way that I coach and our strategies and how they work, that's when you can hop on a call with me directly. We can have a chat, see if I can help you, if I believe you're a good fit, and if so, we'll talk about next steps. If not, I actually do recommend other routes if people aren't a good fit for us. We have free resources and other great things for you to do as well. That being said, if you are new here, most of our episodes, my episodes, are not this long. <laughs> I just had a really long story that I really wanted to share. Uh, most of the time, they're like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Be sure to check out that free training at diabetesinaction.com. I talk about the formula, how we approach diabetes, and why it's different from what you're currently doing. And of course, if you are new here as well or returning but have not yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button, drop a comment, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to chat. Have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one and keep up the fight.